Each user location has an administrator screen. This screen has control over the different users and their respective passwords to get into the system. To add new users or change the administrator's password, go to the administrator icon, identify yourself as administrator, enter your password which can be changed if desired. The password from the factory will be preset to MedSpira123. Log in and come to the screen where several options can be seen. One is the ability to modify the Bluetooth connection by tapping the Bluetooth icon. It is preset at the factory and you shouldn't need to do this. Verify that the fob is working properly by pressing the power button on the fob and doing a connection test by tapping the connection test screen. You will see a quick display to confirm that a connection has been established and then it will shut itself off. This process is to verify that the fob is working. The next area is security. This is where a new user will be added. Let's begin the process of adding a new user. You may choose any name or ID for a new user. Simply enter the information in the ID section. Each user will have their own password. Once the password is entered, save the information as a new user. Along with establishing a new user, you can also reset your on-site administrator password at any time by tapping this icon. Again, the default administrator password will be MedSpira123. The next function to discuss is activity. The activity icon will bring you to the different levels of the software that are available to you. The tablet PC comes with two software areas that are activated initially. One is the diagnostic. This allows you to do the actual test and also view reports. There is also an icon that you can choose for reviewing reports directly before the interpretation phase of the examination. This is if you have loaded the software onto any Windows 7 or Windows 8 PC, but not connected to the M Compass FOB. You may opt for Report Viewing from this screen, or simply turn off this option. This is also the area where more compatibilities and software can be added to the system in the future and could be accessed. Once you have confirmed your Bluetooth connection, added new users, you may go back to the diagnostic area at this time. Confirm that you wish to log out of this screen and it will take you back to the main home screen. This has been a review of the administration functions that are available as the on-site system administrator. Let's begin the diagnostic manometry testing of the system. You enter it by clicking the icon on the main screen. Here is where you would enter your username and password. After tapping Login, it will bring you to the Patient Data screen. Instructions to this screen are located at the top as shown here. The only field that is required is the Patient ID field. The rest is optional, but most clinics would be entering this information. The date is automatically entered. If for any reason you need to enter a different date, you may do so manually. The Patient ID field is then entered. You may use any combination of letters or numbers in keeping with your particular clinic's standards. The next entry field also optional is the patient's first name, the middle initial, and then the patient's last name. Enter the sex of the patient. And now enter the patient's date of birth. The date of birth can be done by a pull-down menu. By selecting the pull-down menu and tapping twice on the year, you can navigate to the proper year. Make the choices for both the month 
and then the day, and the date of birth will be entered in that field. The next field is the indication. There is a pull-down menu. If there's already an indication in place, you may simply tap Enter. You may also enter a new indication in that field. Once the information is entered, it will be there in the pull-down menu going forward. The next field is Physician Name. Again, you may use the pull-down menu to choose an existing name or enter a new physician's name. The next field is the Referring Physician. And finally is the Test Operator. This is the clinician that is actually performing the test. Again, the only required field is the Patient ID field. The rest is optional. Once you've completed that section, tap the Next arrow in the lower right corner of the screen. This will bring you to the setup screen for the M-Compass manometer, which is referred to as a FOB. It's the handheld manometer that is used in conjunction with the disposable catheter. It is wireless, so there are no direct connections to the tablet PC. Follow the instructions at the top of the screen to activate and test the FOB. The first step is to turn on the Power On button on the FOB. The FOB will go through its own self-diagnostic check. You'll see a series of lights turning on and off. Once that check is completed, you will see that the ON button will be green, the battery button will be green, and the Bluetooth symbol will be flashing a blue LED. At that point, tap the Connect Bluetooth button to the left of the image of the FOB. The Bluetooth light will stop flashing, which indicates that it is now connected and that you have paired the system together to run. Now tap Next to take you to the screen to begin setup of the disposable catheter and connect it to the handheld manometer or FOB. There are two connections that need to be made. The first is the white universal anal canal connector that has four ports. These are pneumatic connectors and they are keyed and can only be inserted in alignment with the arrows on the disposable catheter, which is aligned with the arrow on the top of the FOB. Assuring proper alignment and connection assures that the orientation of the measurement balloons is always the same. The connection, when firmly and properly seated, will create a pneumatic seal. The next connection is the three inch long extension tube. One end of the tube connects to the four-way stopcock that's part of the catheter. The other end is connected to the single lure connector located on the front of the fob next to the anal canal measurement balloon port. Once you have made both connections, tap the FOB Connected button and verify that the connections are correct and properly sealed. As you follow the instructions at the top of the screen, you will see that it says to turn the lever on the FOB to position 2. There is a gray lever on the side of the FOB. During setup and use, this lever will have three positions. Position 1 is in the down position. Position 2, as shown in this screen, is in the up position. And position 3 is forward, facing the catheter position. The instructions will indicate that it is now time to prime the system. You will need to turn the lever to position 2, as indicated. The software will automatically indicate that you have done so. Now you need to prime the system with 3 cc's of air. As the graphic indicates, you should utilize the provided 5 mm syringe loaded with 3 cc's of air. Connect it to the top of the priming port, which is located under the cover on the top of the fob. You will then press 3 cc's of air into the fob and then into the catheter. You will notice that the four channels of the measurement balloons on the catheter on the distal end will inflate and become firm. The syringe, while holding the plunger down, is removed from the fob. As the instructions indicate, you then now move the lever to position 3, and now you are ready to do a complete test. It is important to note that the four anal canal balloons won't necessarily be as firm as when they were first injected with the 3 cc's of air because they equalize when the syringe is removed, but they will have air pressure in them. 
By clicking the next arrow in the lower right corner, you will be taken to the Prime screen to confirm that the priming process has been done properly. The four balloons have air pressure in them, they are inflated slightly, and you can confirm by tapping the Prime button. The next screen describes the proper insertion of the catheter into the patient. There is an illustration at the bottom of the screen depicting the letter P as it appears on the posterior side of the catheter. It is now important to lightly press on each of the four anal canal balloons on the distal end of the catheter to verify that they have air pressure and are inflated. There are four anal canal measurement balloons. There's one located on the posterior side, one on the anterior side, one on the left, and one on the right. Each one of these represents an independent channel and takes their own measurement. The graphic on the screen indicates that the orientation requires that the P be oriented facing the spine. The A should be oriented forward on the patient, and the left and right will be corresponding to the patient's left and right arms. The instructions remind you to lubricate the distal end of the catheter device and instruct the patient to relax. Utilize a standard lubricant to the distal end, the rectal balloon, and the four anal canal balloons. The catheter features a soft, flexible tip, but has enough strength and firmness to be inserted without the use of your finger. Gently insert the catheter through the sphincter to the point where you would be located to the zero location on the catheter. As the graphic shows, there are indicator lines on the catheter. They start at zero, then go to one, two, three, four, and five. With a typical patient, the four anal canal balloons should be just inside the anal verge at catheter position zero. Anal canals range between 20 millimeters and 45 millimeters in length. At this time, if you also choose to measure rectal pressures, which is also part of the M Compass system, you will need to prime the rectal balloon. This is done by taking the provided 60 cc syringe, filling to the 60 cc mark, and connecting it to the open port on the four way stopcock. Then turn the stopcock knob so that it's now open to all three channels. Prime the rectal balloon with the 10 cc of air. At that time, once you're holding it with the 10 cc of air, turn the stopcock so that it's now just communicating between the fob and the rectal balloon. 10 cc of air are needed because this is an air-charged manometry catheter, and the air is used to transfer the pressure levels back to the pressure sensors in the portable manometer. Without having any air in the system, you would not be able to take a rectal pressure. During the implementation of the device, you will be inflating and deflating the rectal balloon. You must always maintain 10 cc of air in that rectal balloon to maintain the ability to take pressure. Once you have connected the rectal balloon and it's inflated, tapping the next arrow in the lower right corner of the screen will take you to the testing area. You are now ready to begin the resting test. The resting test is designed to get an initial reading on the patient in the resting position. It takes the pressure of the anal sphincter muscles at rest at the posterior, anterior, left and right locations. The graphic displays the posterior, the left, the anterior and the right. The graphic shows the individual balloon's position as they relate to the patient. Step-by-step -step directions are located at the top of the screen. Begin the resting test by telling the patient to relax. And you need to enter the catheter position and tap run and pause. The catheter position is located down on the bottom of the screen. Tap location, start at zero, and you can select locations one, two, three, four, or five. The graphic next to the numbers displays the depth of the catheter insertion. Warning indicators are at location three, four, and five, because at that point you are generally past the standard anatomy of a patient and the catheter position would extend into the rectum. 
For this example, we'll select location 0, which is just inside the anal verge. Tap the catheter position and verify that it's at 0. Tap the Run button in the lower part of the screen, and this will begin the test. On this test, a standard 20-second countdown will be displayed. You'll see a countdown clock at the bottom of the screen. There is also a pause button or a restart button that you can use at any time to stop or start the test. After 20 seconds, the resting test will automatically send you to the next test, which is called the squeeze test. If for any reason you need to redo a resting test, you can simply tap the resting icon and restart. You will need to select the catheter position again and then redo the resting test. The purpose of the resting test is to get a baseline reading of the posterior, anterior, left and right functions of the patient. The next test is called the squeeze test. As the name suggests, the patient is instructed to squeeze as if holding in a bowel movement. Readings will be taken from the posterior, left, anterior and right positions. Confirm the catheter position by tapping the catheter button again. In this example, we are still at position zero on the patient, so tap that button. You will see a five second delay before the run button comes up. The five second delay allows the M compass to take an initial reading before the patient begins their squeeze. Each squeeze should last for 20 seconds, and then there is a one minute wait between each squeeze. The system is capable of handling up to five different squeeze tests at each catheter position. Most patients will do one to three. When the patient is ready, tap the run button. Then instruct the patient to squeeze. Pressure is being applied to the balloons by their squeeze. Encourage the patient to continuously squeeze as long as they can through the 20 second countdown. Once the countdown hits zero, instruct the patient to stop squeezing and relax. The standard protocol says to wait one minute between squeezes. If you choose to start another squeeze test prior to a one minute waiting period, the system requires at least 20 seconds before you can enter the catheter position to restart. You'll notice that when the counter is at 40 seconds, you'll be able to enter the catheter position and then five seconds later, the initialization reading will appear to do the run position again. The timer indicates that the patient has now rested for 30 seconds. Tap the location button of the catheter again. This takes the initial reading for 5 seconds. The run button will activate again, and another test can be initiated. Again, instruct the patient to sustain their squeeze for the full 20 second period. It's important to note that if something occurs during the squeeze test, such as the patient coughs, this may be entered in notations and will be attached to that test. The notes function can be found down in the lower corner of the screen. In this example, we will enter that the patient coughed during the test, and that will now be recorded in the history of her test. Tap OK to confirm. Notes can be added to any of the six tests at any time to assist in remembering specifics about each test conducted. A third test is conducted in the same manner. The catheter position is entered, confirming that you are still in position zero. A five second initialization will occur. Then tap the run test button. Again, instruct the patient to squeeze and hold it for the full 20 seconds. As they squeeze, measurements of the anal canal pressures are taken in four locations. After the 20 seconds is completed, instruct the patient to relax and rest. You can perform as many as five of these tests. Most clinicians do one to three. When completed, tap the Next Test button and you will proceed to the next test, called the Expel Empty Test. This test entails instructing the patient to simulate trying to expel a bowel movement. It's described as an expel empty test as it is done with an empty rectal balloon. The balloon is already primed with 10 cc's of air. 
That is considered the empty position. The test is started by first verifying.